workroom in near Houston, Texas. Yeah. Yes. Yes. With a particular cushion challenge. So Terry, if you could fill me in on. Um, so we've got three cushions we have here. Three cushions. I made them. I'm not happy with them. The first challenge was they did not want a zipper exposed in the back. So I was. I tried hand sewing it, and I just wasn't real happy with the hand sewing. So I got advice from the forum, and they said put an invisible zipper in. So I ripped them all apart, put the invisible zipper in, but still not happy. Um, first challenge is the zipper. Mm -hmm. It needs to be an invisible zipper for client specification. Or hand sewn. Or hand sewn. There's no, no typical visible, visible zipper. zipper in the back. Yeah. Is that because they're they're exposed cushions? I think so. I honestly don't know. Okay. It's so for a designer, and she didn't give me those. And it was designer, and, and they gave you cushions to go by, or were measures? They gave me cushions. They were existing cushions. I took the old cushions off, and the foam and the wrap is all original. What is the reason why you're not comfortable just giving them to the client right now? The welting, especially at this at this join, is kind of wavy. Okay, we'll address that. What other issues? So the boxing does not seem perfectly straight to me, and I don't know if that's just. So a, there's a little skew, right, mm -hmm. in, in the corners. There's um, a little blip there, right. Uh, so that was not bad. Mm -hmm. um, this one kind of bulges a little bit, mm -hmm. and. If we look at the others, yeah, it looks like we've got some of those issues going on. Um, again. Yeah, we've got this corners. corner rounding out. This corner is more square. That one's more square, but it's it, but it's bulging. Now, uh, in your defense, mm -hmm. the it was challenging fabric, right? The yeah. fabric um, had a lot of movement. Like, it wasn't really stretchy. stable. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so that's always a challenge. Um, but it's got a good weight to it, mm -hmm. so right. that would help stabilize. Some of the issues that we're having, as far as you know, the the boxing looking a little wavy. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes that can be fixed by just changing the way you have the seam allowance when you're stuffing the insert. I thought yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. because um, I've I've seen some really outstanding cushion work be installed incorrectly mm -hmm. and, and have it really, especially if the fabric's flexible, have it really make the cushion look like a bad job mm -hmm. when in fact it wasn't bad at all. You want your seam allowance to be going to the boxing. Okay. From the top and you flip it over, it's to the boxing. So that what that does is it evens out because I can feel, I can just, grab my own, I, I can look at this and know that this seam, even though it looks misshapen, mm -hmm. it's actually probably fine if you went in there and pushed the seam allowance down to the box. And you shouldn't have any seam allowance, on a box cushion, you shouldn't have any seam allowance flipped up here on the top. And on sides where it starts on the top and then goes down and up and then down, that's what gets a the good sewing job will look awful. So we'll get in there and start working on that. So now we want to reach in. If 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 you were happy with the job and you're stuffing it, you mm -hmm. reach in and you push the seam allowance down and you pull the batting up. Okay, and I'll show you what that does all of a sudden to a, to a misshapen corner. See now, see how sharp this corner became? Yep. Oops. Right? Good. And then you go in and you push out the, put some batting, move some batting around. See the difference? Yes, absolutely. Right? I don't love the fact that the welt was wavy, but that, that will improve that. We do have an issue here where we're going to have to go back and get closer. So you can see the, the stitch of the cord. Yeah. Okay. But just to make the point of stuffing it, Oh yeah, you can really see how that makes an edge there. Yeah, it, it just straightens out, right? Okay, the, the next time you do a cushion, mm -hmm. here's here's the sequence. One, absolute get finished measures from the designer, even if you have a cushion to go by. Okay. Sure. Number two, um, when you cut and cover your welt, you're going to use medium weight, rolly, 5 30 seconds. Two, Number three, three, when you cover the cord, 
Um, I usually cut it two and a quarter inches okay. wide on the bias. Okay. And um, and stitch those pieces together. And when you've got that, um, I think you said you had glue basted. I did. I, I glue basted the welting to the boxing or to the to the top to the bottom. top, and then stapled the boxing on and only sewed in one pass. Got it. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to um, don't go through, don't, you don't do any basting at all. Okay. In fact, you're allowed to use one pin for the whole project. What? One pin, <laughs> one pin for the whole project. That is um, what I show the students, you know, uh, who take a, a cushion class, mm -hmm. right? Um, that it's kind of very efficient system uh -huh. and you actually get a better cushion if you don't try to map it all out ahead of time. What you're going to do instead is you'll take your prepared welt mm -hmm. okay, and you will stitch it to the face of the fabric but from the underneath. underneath. Okay. Now some people go as far as not even preparing the welt and cover the welt as they're stitching it to the cushion. I like that method too. So you said you said that you would cut your welting at two and a quarter. Does that mean you have a larger seam allowance for the face, or? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so one thing I forgot is that um, when I do cushions, I use three quarter seam allowance. Um, you, that helps, especially when because upholstery fabrics aren't always super stable. Right. There's usually some game to them, and and what that gives you is. You have your stitch, and then when you serve to clean things up, mm -hmm. you will get to the half an inch then. Gotcha. But it's good to have that three quarters, just a little more stability at corners and as so you surge at the end. You wouldn't so you wouldn't make your cord surge and then put it on. Okay, I don't. Uh, if there's too much bulk and this is heavy fabric, then mm -hmm. you can apply your weld and surge the top with the weld and the bottom with the weld before you add your boxing. Okay, that works. Okay, but um, uh, but I tend to. Depends on the way the fabric, whether I would take that step of surge then or just wait till the whole thing's all together. Okay? Okay. okay. Um, so we've applied the, 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 the medium weight butt cord mm -hmm. to the top and the bottom. Um, it matters what side you're stitching it from. If you stitch well from the top, then, then what happens is as you're stitching and you're applying the cord, the feed dog. Mm -hmm. starts gathering up the bottom fabric. Right. And so you end up usually with puckers in your top and bottom. But when you apply it, as I said, the weld is underneath as you do that stitch. Because that's taking up all the extra. Yeah, right? yeah so if, if, if the feed dog is pulling, mm -hmm. then it, it doesn't usually move the cord okay. because the cord is so stiff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are we going to do with this one? I don't know. <laughs> I want to find new fabric. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start I over. I to start over. I, I do have to say, though, you did, you did a, one really good thing that is a common error for people who don't do a lot of cushions. And that is you, you had an initial cushion where the corners had rounded out. Mm -hmm and you corrected for it. You went back to a square corner. So when you made your cuts from the top and bottom, you squared them up again. Yes. Um, which, which is so, yay. Yay. <laughs> I did one thing right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, that's good because this, um, you know, if, if we were just focused in, let me have some, if we were just focused in on one corner and we had the, um, and we have the seam allowance turned the right way. I mean, that's a good, that's a darn good corner. There is nothing wrong with that. But had you followed the curve and the misshape of mm -hmm. the original, you would it would have made it worse and it would have been a mess, <laughs> and you wouldn't have been able to line those up. Let's take one, get closer with the stitch, um, make sure the corners are lined up. And let's stabilize the back panel and hand stitch it close and see if we get something that you're proud of. Okay. And then, um, and then if not, then maybe look at a total we do. Okay. All right, so I think we have a plan. We're, we're, let's take, um, 
Let's take the one that's in worse shape, and I think that's the one where the zipper's, zipper's already busted, mm -hmm. and uh, and see if we can make it work without remaking the whole thing. Okay. Hi. I'm Seal de Guglielmo, librarian at the Curtains and Self-Furnishings Resource Library. As a Pro Plus member of the library, you can watch this video advertisement-free and talk to industry professionals in our online forum. Visit the library to learn more about starting or growing a business using your creative sewing skills. See you at the library. It's sometimes impossible to fix puckers and corners once you've already gone all the way around with it. Mm -hmm. you know, um, the, the best case is to notice that happening as you're switching it and stop and rip out before you get around to the next corner. Right. Okay. But I think there's some work we can do here, especially this pucker. We could probably work that in back here, and there's a pucker on this corner too. And um, I know it looks like you did a relief cut. I did. I did. So there's a lesson, mm -hmm. right? Um, no relief cuts in cushions, really. Really. And there's no reason for it. And the re and, 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 and why that is is because, so this is a, a, a straight cut. Okay. When you stuff the cushion, you'll be pushing the seam allowance to the boxing. And so a relief cut doesn't provide additional movement that you need. Okay. Right? There's no, right? In fact, what it does is it gives you an opportunity for it to be less stable. So for that pucker and this corner pucker, uh, we're going to rip from here all the way to there uh, because since we've got a pucker on both sides, we can work the excess into the seam. Okay. Okay. Let's do some working. Well, the beauty of stitching on a straight stitch machine is that thread's not that strong. Yeah. Yeah. We'll fix that okay. too. We're going to move to the walking foot and use the bonded nylon thread, which um, is ideal for cushions because you shouldn't be able to rip out a seam that easy. So glad you can, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going around the corner, picking up yeah, the Yeah, get about... Um, an inch around the corner. That'll give me the opportunity to show you a corner on the walk foot. Yeah. And we will get a little closer to that welt. Whoops. Okay. stuff the cushion let's mark I think every four inches or so to make sure that we're placing things back together so put that mark in the seam allowance because that's what I didn't like about it I it was I, probably going fine yep. for a while then towards the end we had pucker yeah yep. yeah that's exactly that is the challenge okay so turn this right side out Push the corners out, seam allowance to the boxing. Right? If I'm going to do a cushion, I want the insert and I want to stuff it and I want to make sure that it was put on properly because that that's half the battle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm thinking this is looking good. Oh, I feel good. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. We're going to do a cry chop. Cry chop to get the. And then let's work on that corner. Close this 
up. So we'll do one final check, make sure the seam allowance is down to the boxing and down to the boxing. Super important at the corners. Yeah, I can feel it. Okay. Awesome. And then when we work on the back, we want to push this in so far that there's no chance of that kind of switching, reverting back. Right. Right. So I'm going to take a chance here. I don't don't know if this is going to work. How about do you have um, poultry pins or poultry pins, or just give me some straight pins? The good sharp, you know, the kind the workroom channel sells. Of course, that's all I have. Okay. So I pushed in really far, took the pressure off it. Ooh. Oh, there you go. Okay. Let's push. I'm, I'm pulling the seam allowance this way, right? It's going to go to the boxing. Okay. Lay in. And lining up my pencil marks. That's, that's the key, right? And straighten with the pin and then down. Yeah. there was a big lump in that connection. So we're, instead of having it over that, we're actually going to do a straight stitch. This hand stitch back, beautiful. Back. We'll do mm -hmm. that a little bit there, but I will. Yep. And then, how are we doing? Good. That side doesn't look so bad anymore. And, okay, corners. Let's work that back there. Yeah, that's that good, huh? Great. All right, shall we pack Woo! it? Yes. Bag and pack it. Okay, let's put all the, okay, yeah, all the seams at the back. Yay! Awesome. Done! Woo! We're stitching the weld underneath. Mm -hmm. So we three quarter inch seam allowance. Mm -hmm. Your welt was cut at two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. Excellent. And you covered it on a straight stitch machine with color match thread. Yes. Yes, that's what you can do until you're comfortable stitching, covering the welt as you go. Right. Okay. And um, I put a piece of tape here to mark three quarters. Okay. But you don't have to. You can, you know, just well. And then the other thing that is going to be helpful as you're training is um, a Sharpie pen. If you um, put a dot mm -hmm. or, or a okay. line like three quarters in, the width of your thumb is three quarters, so that can help you eyeball. Maybe and like when you, you might want to trim that off. Yeah. And then when you get down here, you know, that, that's your turn. Okay. So it's it's good to until you real real comfortable, right? If you mark those, now I wouldn't do it in Sharpie on a real project, but right, okay, of course, okay. <laughs> Before you get to that point, lift it up, 
-hmm. and you're going to make a relief cut all the way to the stitch. Okay. Go ahead. All the way to the stitch, perpendicular, straight, yeah, perpendicular this into this. a little too long for this, but I think it's There you go. Good. There you go. Good. Okay. okay, so what that will allow you to do is make that sharp turn. Okay. Okay. But do you see how the bias cut yeah. keeps it from crunching there? Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. That's what I then look, if you put that to boxing, beautiful. Yeah.